The Pythagorean theorem is an application of squares and square roots, and it's a really super old formula. We're talking about like ancient Greek mathematicians back in the BC era. That's how long this formula or this concept has been around. One of the things that the Pythagorean theorem deals with is right triangles. And I know you learned about right triangles a long time ago. Let's just refresh your memories. In a right triangle, the sides that form the right angle are called legs. And the side opposite the right angle, which is always the longest side, is called the hypotenuse. Look at the spelling. Please spell it correctly. Um, so we've got this picture, and this is describing what we just filled in. The legs are the sides that form the right angle. So see, there's a right angle. We've got two legs. And then we've got the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is the side that's always across from the right angle. Now, back in the ancient times of Greek mathematicians, there was this Greek mathematician, Greek philosopher named Pythagoras, and here's what he said. For any right triangle, the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs equals the square of the length of the hypotenuse. What we write to shorten all that is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We say a and b are the legs, as you see in the picture, and then we use the letter c for the hypotenuse. Now, C is always the hypotenuse, as I just mentioned. And also, C is always the longest side. So, let's use the Pythagorean theorem in some examples. In this triangle, in example one, in these triangles, we have the length of these two legs. We have that this is 5 meters and this is 12 meters. And what they want us to do is they want us to find the length of the hypotenuse, which is right here. See, it's marked C. Now, it's not always marked C. It could be X. They could try and trick you and put an A or a B there. But when you look for the right angle, you'll notice that that's across from the right angle. So that's always the hypotenuse. So you plug in your information. I always like to write the formula first. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I usually write that anytime there's a formula. And then you plug in. It doesn't matter which one you call a and which one you call b because they're interchangeable. But the c has to be the hypotenuse. So you do 5 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. And then you just calculate 5 squared is 25, 12 squared is 12 times 12, that's 144. And then you just add them, uh, you get 169. And then remember from the last lesson we said it's not technically by itself, you have to get rid of the square. And the way that you do that is you square root, so we square root both sides. And the square root of 169 is 13. Now, I told you in the last lesson that we should write both positive and negative if we put our own symbol. But since we're talking about the measurement of the side of a triangle, we can't have a negative measurement. So we're not going to use the negatives. So it has to be 13 positive 13 meters. It can't be negative. All right, why don't you try letter B on your own? All right, so let me talk you through my steps. The first thing that I did was I wrote the formula. Then I plugged in the 8 and the 15. It didn't matter. If you put the 15 first, that's okay. Don't change it. You're not wrong. Then you get 64 and 225. And then when you add them, you get 289. You see how I'm doing all my work going down? None of my work is going across. I'm just writing my step. And then underneath it, I'm putting what it equals. Then you do 64 plus 225, which is 289. You have to square root to make the exponent go away. So this cancels the exponent. And then you get 17. Now it becomes a little trickier when we already know the hypotenuse. That's the easy part, example one. In example two, you see they actually gave us the hypotenuse because across from the right angle, we actually know this measurement. So this is the C value. 
Now, again, they have it marked as A, but it could be an X, or they could be trying to trick you and put it a B or a C there. Um, so you just have to always look for the hypotenuse. The steps are not any different. The first step is always write the formula. The second step is plug in what you have. But you just have to be careful because you're not plugging in for A and B. What you have is you have a B value and you also have the hypotenuse. So you see the difference between what I did in example one and what I'm doing here now is that the missing value is on the left instead of on the right. So this is where it gets a little different. I'm going to still square. So use your calculator. I'll pause 2.1 squared. Now remember, I'm not looking for the square root of 2.1. I'm looking for 2.1 times itself. That gives you 4.41. And then 2.9 squared, which is 2.9 times itself, is 8.41. Now this is the very different step. I can't combine because they're on different sides. So we do what we did back in chapter one. You drop a line and you get the A by itself. So I'll get A squared equals four. And then I square root both sides and I'll get an A value of two. So the answer is two centimeters. One way that you can check kind of that you have the right answer is, remember I told you C has to be the longest side. So your answer has to be less than 2.9. The hypotenuse is always the longest side, so my answer has to be less than 2.9. The steps are exactly the same in letter B. So follow the steps that we just did. Give letter B a shot on your own. Okay, let me talk you through my steps. The first thing that I did was I wrote the formula. Oh, whoops, I didn't write my formula. Oh my gosh, I'm such a terrible teacher. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, then what you do after you write the formula, shame on me, is you plug in what you know. So I found that the hypotenuse was across from the 90, so that's 10.4, so that went in the C spot. And then it doesn't matter where you put 9.6. You could put it in the A spot, even though technically they gave you A. So then I did each number, I squared it, meaning I multiplied it by itself. Then I had to move this 92.16 over, so I subtracted it. I got 16, then I took the square root, and I got 4 meters. Now when you go down to example 3, you might start freaking out because it's a, not a basic shape. It's a square pyramid. But you see there's really a right triangle inside of this square pyramid. So the slant height, which I know you talked about when you talked about square pyramids, the slant height actually makes a right triangle right here. So what they want is they want this value. Now, that value is actually the hypotenuse of our triangle, so that's our easy one from example one, where we can just plug in the numbers and add. So I'll be a good teacher and write my equation. Then I'm going to plug in what I know. The hypotenuse is the x because it's across from the 90. And like I said, it doesn't matter what you plug in, so I'll do 6.4 here, and I'll do 4.8 there. Don't forget the squaring. And then you get your calculator. 6.4 squared is 40.96. 4.8 squared is 23.04. And then you add. You get 64. Oh, that's nice and friendly. And then when you square root, you get that the x is 8. So the answer is 8 inches. 
Now you can also do this on the coordinate plane. You can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between points. Now I don't know why my grid went onto the next screen, so um, let's just move on to the next screen. It wants us to find the distance between these two points right here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sketch a grid, plot the points. Why don't you pause the video and do that on your own now. Just plot those two points. All right, so I didn't really need all that space on the left, but here we go. So they have us finding the distance between these two points. So really what they want is that. What I can do is I can turn it into a right triangle by doing that. And then I can find it using the Pythagorean theorem. So I know that this distance is 2, and I know that the height is... 8. So what I want to do is 2 squared plus 8 squared equals c squared because remember the formula is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So let's do it. 2 squared is 4, 8 squared is 64, so you get 68 which is not a perfect square, so I'll pause while you get your calculator. Let's find the square root of 68. It's going to be 8.25. I just rounded to the nearest hundredth. I don't think it told me what to round to on the previous slide. So that's what we got. 8.25 is the distance of that blue line. Example 5 is very similar. It tells you what to do. So I'm going to start you off, but then I'm going to ask you to finish this yourself. You play capture the flag. You are 50 yards north and 20 yards east of your team's base. The other team is 80 yards north and 60 yards east of your base. How far are you from the other team's base? So it gives you the steps. The first thing it wants you to do is plot the point 2080 and 6080. I'm sorry, 2050 and 6080. So step one says to graph it. And actually, I'm, since we can't be negative, I'm going to just stay in that first quadrant. So let me erase that. So let's just make a big L for quadrant one. From the description, you are at 2050. So let's go by tens. So I'm at 2050. And your other team's base is at 6080. It tells us then to draw a right triangle with a hypotenuse that represents the distance. So let's just finish the picture and then I'm going to let you do it on your own. Let's turn that into a right triangle. So just like what we did up in example four, I want you to finish and solve this right now. Find this value just like we did in the previous example. All right, there you go. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you talk to me next.